Good morning to everyone. We are happy to see everybody that is present this morning. We are also happy to have those that are in our uh, Facebook and YouTube audience as well. This morning, our announcements are as follows. We have a thank you card for, from Sister Ann Brown, and it reads, To my Carver Church family, I sincerely thank all of you who helped to make the celebration of life service for Brother Harold Brown a success. It could not have, uh, I could not have done it without your willingness to participate. Your kindness during this trying time of our life is greatly appreciated. I will be forever grateful for your thoughts and act and your prayers. Thank you so much for being there for me, Sister Ann Brown. And another thank you card. Kindness is more than the nice things you do. It's who you are through and through. To our common family, words can express how much your prayers were needed and appreciated. We like to give a special thanks to Sister McDowell, Brother Brothers, Brother Wilson, Sister Wanda Jones, Sister Denise Garner, and others who, uh, for your call, phone calls, text messages, and cards. We miss you all so much, and we can't. Uh, we find comfort knowing that. We serve the same God. Yours in Christ, brother and sister Hurston, and it has a PS in here. Uh, say a prayer for the cowboy. I'm not sure <laughs> who that's intended for. <laughs> we also have a thank you card to the church family, uh, to my church family. Thank you for making my college graduation special. I am so blessed to have you as a part of my village. Thank you for all the acts of kindness shown. Continue to keep me in prayer. And this is from Sister Sydney Johnson. We wish to welcome to the family uh, here at Chicago Road, Sister Faith Marie Baker. She was baptized on Thursday, August the 19th, 2021. And let us support and encourage our new baby in Christ. Let's give her a hand. Here is the agenda of meetings for the month of September. On Saturday, September 4th at 9 a.m., there will be a teacher's meeting. On Saturday, September 11th at 9 a.m., a men's meeting. On Sunday, September 12th, immediately following the morning worship, there will be a new convert slash new member recognition luncheon. As I understand this, this is just for the new members and their partners. Um, Saturday, September 18th at 10.30 will be reading safari. To continue to uh, maintain safety and health, we ask that all observe our sanitation and distancing measures. We will continue to take measures to keep everyone safe. The last installment of the preacher panel discussion will be this coming Wednesday, and our own brother Carruthers will be uh, facilitating that uh, event, and we ask that you look at your bulletin for the particulars concerning, concerning it. For the month of August and September, the Sunshine Ministry will con be collecting peanut butter for Winston Salem Senior Services. If anyone would like to participate in this event, please place peanut butter in the uh, peanut butter in the box located in the foyer. If you need more information, you can see Sister Carol McDowell. Thanks in advance for your participation. This concludes our announcements. Our services will now begin. Finally, brothers and sisters, 
What serve is true? What serve is noble? What serve is right? What serve is pure? What serve is thing is, is lovely? What serve is admirable? If anything be, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Your holy, righteous Father in heaven, we come before you, Father, give you all the praise and the glory. Thank you, Father, for this day you bless us with. We pray that we use this day in honor of you and showing the world that you are special and most important in our lives. We pray that the brothers following after me, the, the songs, the prayer, the service, the preaching, Father, that it will be edifying and uplifting to each one and every one of us that we may go out and represent you to the world. We thank you for all things. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. If you're happy in the Lord, say amen one more time. Amen. You know, it's good to be in the Lord. I was glad this morning when they woke up and said, this is Sunday morning. Amen. It's time to go to church and be with my brothers and sisters. That just made me just so, so happy. Uh, I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind was set Yeah. 
shall we bow together. Dear merciful and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for this hour that you have allowed us to come together. Oh, yeah. And Father, we are mindful that we're not here because we're so good and we're so great. Uh -huh. But we're here, Father, by your grace and your mercy and yeah. your love mm -hmm. for every one of us. And Father, we ask you, first of all, Father, to forgive us of those things that we've done that we should not have done. Those things that we've thought that we should not have thought and considered that we should not have considered. Mm -hmm. Forgive us, Father, leaving undone those things that we should have done. We pray, Father, that you bless us to come up a little higher yeah. and to be better fit subjects mm -hmm. in your kingdom. Yes, Lord. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, now that as we come before you with our prayers and our petitions, that you would look humbly upon us, hear them, and act in our behalf. Yeah. We pray, Father, a special prayer now, Father, for those that have yet to return to the great assembly. Uh -huh. We ask you again, Father, to prick their hearts and allow them, Father, to be guided to this place and to oh, yeah. this meeting at the next appropriate time. Oh, yeah. We pray that you continue to keep your blessings upon them, Father, and strengthen them in heart and spirit. And we pray to Heavenly Father again, a special prayer, Father, for those, the Heavenly Father, that are going through the certain challenges in life. Yeah. A special prayer, the Heavenly Father, that we pray to Heavenly Father for the situation that's going on over in Afghanistan yeah. right now. Yeah. We pray again, Father, that you would keep your special providential care upon your people that are over there, yeah. that you would mm -hmm. keep them, Father, in the harbor of your care. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you would bless order to come out of chaos yeah. there. Yeah. And we also, Father, pray for the nation of Haiti that has undergone another horrific earthquake. Yeah. Yeah. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as they go through the rubble, that you will allow people to be found and to allow them to be cared for. And we pray, Father, that other nations will reach out to help and assist wherever they can. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, also that you bless us in a special way, dear Heavenly Father, with peace to start reigning in our country here yeah. in the U.S. Help, Father, us not to be goaded by antagonists and help antagonistic people to, to calm down, Father, and yeah. help people to come to see each other, Father, in a humane and, and right way. We yeah. pray, dear Heavenly Father, again, that godliness will again prevail in this nation. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, again for the leaders of this nation. We pray a special prayer, Father, for the President of the United States, that he not be looked on, Father, in a humiliating way, but that you would give him, Father, a sense of understanding, a sense of way to guide this country and to lead this country. And we pray, Father, that other elected officials will get behind him. And we pray, Father, for the nation of people here in America. We ask you again, Father, to stay this pandemic and allow people, Father, to take it for the seriousness for which it is and to allow people to be concerned about one another and others. We pray a special prayer, dear Heavenly Father, for our young students and students that will be going back to the different campuses, yeah. the different schools yeah. and colleges. We pray again <clears throat> that you bless them, Father, to take safe protocols and allow again them to be able to do in-class learning and to go on about the educational process. And we pray again for a sense of normalcy and a sense, the Heavenly Father, of peace in the classrooms and in the schools and in the communities. And Father, we pray also, Father, a special prayer for those that are dealing with illnesses right now. Whether it's COVID or other illnesses, we ask again, that you go into the hospital, go into the homes, and 
touch their bodies and allow them, Father, once again to recover. Yeah. And Father, we are mindful again of those that have lost loved ones during <coughs> this time and that's being accentuated, Father, through the COVID and other things. We pray again that you give them a special comfort in these hours of being uh, departed from their loved ones. We pray again that you comfort those that are still here. And we pray again that you strengthen them, Father. And Father, we also pray a special prayer, Father, for your men's service that preach and teach your word. Amen. A special yes. prayer, Father, for your servant, Brother Carruthers, yes. uh, your neighbors yes. here. We ask that you continue to bless him, Father, to go down into the deep treasures of your word and to allow him, Father, to understand it and to give us an understanding. And we pray, Father, for your people, Father, that we might always stand together in love and commitment for you. The cause yeah. of Christ. Yeah. We pray again, dear Heavenly Father, that you bless each and every individual family here and bless us collectively, Father, to, to do your will and to do it your way. Yeah. We're praying, dear Heavenly Father, for those that are going through financial distresses. We pray again that you not only send them what they need, but also, Father, bless them with many of their wants. Yeah. We're thankful, Father, how you have continued to provide for us in these troubling times. We ask that you continue to provide for us and continue to bless us, to be blessed, and to be a blessing to others. And we ask you again, dear Heavenly Father, to bless us as a family of people united together to do your will and to do it your way. And we thank you again for the opportunity of doing your will. We pray again that we might always be all that you would have us to be. Bless the families that are here. Bless us now to receive your word and to allow it to work those things out in our lives that we need. Work out, work those things out in our family that needs to be worked out. And again, we pray a special prayer again for those young people that are again that are gonna be going back into the classrooms. Allow them to be safe. Allow them, the Heavenly Father, to be prudent and bless them. And we ask you now to bless us as we stand ready to receive your word, that we will hear it and we'll apply it to our lives. Amen. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Why don't you ask the Savior to
join in in praising God on this morning. And I don't have to tell you, you already know. He's been good to you. He has exceeded uh, expectations. And he's done exceedingly abundantly above all we could even ask or think. And we're just thankful that God continues to be so good. And we don't mind praising him. And sharing him with the world. We want to say to any who are our guests on today that we're happy to have you here at the worship services of the Carver Road Church of Christ. And we're thankful for those who have participated in leading our services on this morning, as well as for those of you who have enthusiastically joined in. Amen. It was almost like this was Saturday night at the club. Right now. Amen. 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 Just the sanctified version. Amen. Amen. I've been praising God. I've been thankful. Thankful for that. He's, he's worthy. We're thankful that God has blessed us through these eight months and four weeks in the month of, of August. And uh, we're looking forward as you heard in the announcements to having more engagement with some of the ministries. We do want to say that we want to practice as much safety as possible. Please continue to wear your mask, continue to uh, recognize the sanitation uh, protocols. Get a shot, get a shot. It, it won't hurt you. Uh, many people have had the shock. You don't want to be safe. Amen. You may have to go back to some of the old remedies just to keep yourself safe at this time. I mentioned this 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 morning, Epsom salt if you need it. Bromo seltzer. A lay of noxema before you come out. Just keep yourself safe, whatever. Take wear your mask. Remember that it's not just about you, but you're trying to protect others as well. The Bible says we ought to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. Uh, be careful about the people that you're exposed to. We're thankful for the numbers of you who have called and say you have been exposed and uh, have, have stayed away while, while waiting to see what your health status is. That's that's taking care for others. We're thankful to you uh, for that. And uh, let's just continue being wise and faithful uh, when it comes to COVID. Use the wisdom, uh, my brother used to say, the sense God gave you. And, and have faith that God is able. Look what he's already done in your life yes, sir. through the period of COVID. Some of you have even had COVID and, and you're still on your feet. Isn't God good? It, it could have taken you under, but you're still above ground. And you got to thank God for that. We're talking not only to those who are here uh, this morning, but to those who are listening by way of, of live stream. Thank God for what he's done in your life. We're going to continue our series uh, on evangelism this morning, and evangelism, and I'll be reading a very familiar passage uh, to start with, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. This passage is popular even in the religious world as, as many faith traditions are based upon what uh, are some of the teachings of this particular passage. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says that when the day of, of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And that's amazing. Uh, the Bible says, and we don't want to miss this, they were all with one accord in one place. One of the things that we've been trying to underscore through this period of pandemic is that at some time or another, we need to all come together again in one accord, in one place. And this was not just a 
group of 50 or 100 or 200 Jews, but there were thousands who had come from all over uh, the promised land, and they were all together in, with one accord in one place. It's still good for God's people to be on one accord, right? Amen. Uh, it's still good when we can come together in one place and praise God together. And not be looking at each other side eyed you know, with hateration. Amen. 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 But we appreciate the fact that we have been uh, called together in one place. You know, sometimes I think it'd be good for 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 churches to have entertain, uh, interchangeable signs on the communion table. They, this one says, "I believe this do in remembrance of me." Up there on the communion table, but another passage in. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is tearing one for another because the communion is what we do with one another. We are in one accord and in one place recognizing one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, particularly here, the apostles. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. So that you not only have this massive crowd there of thousands, but this group of people who had walked with Jesus, had talked with Jesus, had been with Jesus, even after his resurrection, they were still together. And I want to talk on the subject this morning, when the day was fully come, when the day was fully come and suggest to you that all of us have lived in, in our lives uh, days when we lead up to a day of expectation something we're looking forward to in our lives and, and we, we, we uh, arrange our lives from sometimes day to day week to week and month to month based upon a day that's going to come a little later in this text, we are talking about when the day was fully come, and we know from our history in the church and our understanding that this text is talking about the day of Pentecost, the day of Pentecost. In our Bible class this morning, we were discussing uh, unleavened bread and Passover. You know, uh, this, this preceded Pentecost, and Jesus had directed his apostles in Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 13, to to go into the city and prepare for the Passover. And, and eventually, within this week, Jesus is going to be hung on the cross. But this day is some weeks later. The day of Pentecost was fully come. Jesus announced a day that would change the world forever. Change the world forever. You know, we often talk about things that change the world forever. Last year, uh, at the murder of George Floyd, someone had said that those events would change the world forever. And his daughter was saying, my daddy has changed the world forever. When Jesus announced the day that would change the world forever, that announcement focused on the hope of history and placed the fulfillment of that hope squarely on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. Jesus stated that day, this is early in his ministry, uh, after uh, leaving uh, the days of temptation. He said, the spirit of the Lord was upon him, and that his task was to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captive, recovering of sight to the blind, and liberty for the bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Luke 4, 18. These words are practical. What Jesus is going to do between two thoughts. He begins by saying the spirit of the Lord was upon him and his task was to preach the gospel to the poor. And then he ends with the other bracket to, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Beginning and end. He's talking about the truth that he will come preaching the acceptable year of the Lord. Through the many activities Jesus would engage in, what was predominant was preaching that impacted the whole of people. Y'all don't miss what I'm saying here. 
There are a lot of people who will tell you, and sometimes you may tell even yourself, that you don't want to hear a lot of preaching, right? But Jesus came to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. We are all accustomed to hearing people say to us when we are trying to point them toward heaven and point them toward what is right. They will tell us, don't preach to me. Anybody ever tell you that? Don't, don't preach to me. Don't say things to me that have to do with evaluating myself and evaluating my life and considering what I'm saying and what I'm doing. And, and you know, America has become pretty successful in convincing uh, uh, those who are in this country that it's a bad thing to ever be preached to. But I want you to understand that if you, you meet Jesus and if you come across Jesus and you have a conversation with Jesus, it won't be very long before Jesus is preaching to you. Because what he understands about us, what we don't understand about ourselves is that we are better every once in a while if we can have something preached to us. Amen. I know we don't want to hear it. We, we don't want to listen to it. But sometimes we need some stuff preached to us. But Jesus says, I'm going to preach the kingdom. I'm going to preach in such a way that there are the gods who will be preached to the poor. I'm going to preach in such a way that the broken hearted will be healed. I'm going to preach in such a way that the captives will be delivered. I'm going to preach in such a way that there's going to be recovering the sight to the blind, not physically blind, but those who are spiritually blind, who don't know which way they're going, don't know how to live from day to day, don't know what's upsetting their court, don't know what's rocking their boat. I want them to hear what thus says God Almighty. He says, I have come to preach. And I to be careful as an individual when I'm trying to avoid hearing the word of God because it's preached to me, especially when it's preached to me and find my life on one side and God's expectation on the other. What I ought to do is celebrate when somebody cares enough for me to show me what is right in the sight of God. Run from that, try to shut you up about that talk about the preacher who does that. I to celebrate that somebody still loves me enough to tell me what's right and wrong. And oftentimes today we think we're helping people. Well, we don't say to them when they have no clothes on, you butt naked. Amen. I remember the king's new clothing. A whole lot of folk are willing to tell you everything's all right, but they know everything is not all right. A lot of folk are, are willing to give you a raise, twist, and take on with your bad self when you know you're not doing right. She said, I've come to preach, and I'm going to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. His task was to begin and end with what he preached. It was preaching that gave evidence that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. And let me drop this. We believe that there are a whole lot of whole lot of things that will impress people enough to bring them to God. But let's not forget that Paul said, for as much as it is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you, those of you who are in Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Romans 1, 15 through 16. All of history moved in the direction of the moment with this moment when Jesus was in the synagogue. Everything from the garden to that moment led to the synagogue experience. It found its fulfillment in the man whose whose name meant God with us. Emmanuel, that, that means God with us. And it's good whenever we do something to have God with us. His task, Jesus' task, was to bridge the gap, heal the breach, close the distance, eliminate the space, and situate men and women in presence and fellowship with their maker and creator, the God who loved them. You don't know, everybody needs God. Amen. Right. 
Everybody needs God. All right, and they need as much God as the Spirit will allow. And you know, nobody's life, nobody's life is what it should be. If it's not a life that's in good relationship with God, according to the teachings of God. There are a lot of people who have a relationship with God, but it's based upon what they think they ought to be doing and not based upon what Jesus had directed them to do. But, but no one of our lives is what it ought to be until we have a right relationship with God. The presence of Jesus in the synagogue that day was evidence of how God determined times and seasons. We make our plans, but don't forget it's God who determines times and seasons. It was evident that no facet of life or dumbbring, a bridge, circumvented or prevented the eternal purpose of God. God is going to have his way. Eventually, God is going to have his way. I may tell God right now, I'm too busy. I may say to God right now, I don't, I don't have time for you. I, May say to God right now, I've got to live my life, I'll get back with you, but understand this eventually, and I'm glad about this. God will have his way. The final say won't belong to Jeff Carruthers. The final say will belong to God. Well, it was evident that those centuries, that through centuries of doubt, mistrust, jealousy, envy, hate, Misdeeds, misdirection, indiscretion, confusion, injury, and murder. The love of God will prevail. That's what you count on. Folk won't always treat you right, but remember the love of God. People won't always talk about you like you deserve to be talked about, but remember the love of God. All of us have met those days when mama's voice didn't heal. Daddy's voice didn't encourage. Sibling's voice couldn't do anything for us. And I suggest to you this morning, always be expected to depend upon the voice of God. If nobody else is for you, trust that God is in your corner. You may have given up, up on some other folk that you can't count on, but don't give up on God. Because he makes everything right. We're talking about planning, planning, God planning. Let me say to us this morning that if we can plan and make things successful, we ought to expect that God can plan and make things successful. We have experienced our planning for special days and work involved to reach a moment of fulfillment. And we celebrate when the day is fully come. Our planning includes what we plan for our children, from the moment of birth through, though the child is an infant without the ability to care for self, depending on others to be fed, to be carried, or to be kept dry and clean, parents envision the day when the child will reach milestones and, and accomplishments, achieving realization of plans and purposes. All of us who have had children, we look at that infant and we can see the day even when that child is graduating from high school. And all of our plans lead in the direction of seeing that day when that child will walk across the stage. Our parents planned it for us, didn't they? They planned it for us, and I know they had moments when, during those plans where, where they had some doubt whether we'd ever make it. Amen. Whether we would become what they expected us to come. But they worked in that direction to see the day when we walked across the stage. Parents began envisioning high school and graduation, though each knows that the young person will have to navigate elementary, middle school, and high school years. All look forward to the day when the hope is realized. And on that day, relatives of previous generations, siblings, and friends celebrate the end of a journey and the commencement of another. They are glad when that day fully comes. And I say again, if God, if we can plan, we ought to expect that God can plan. We ought to expect that if we have plans, that God himself has plans. If we've got plans for our family, expect that God has plans for us. 
not only that, there are plans for lifetime partnerships in marriage. Little girls oftentimes think about the day that they will be wed, and little boys eventually come along. Amen, somebody who has not been in awe of the mother and father who plan for the day when the bride will walk down the aisle. That, that could be one of the most uh, horrifying days a man ever sees is a mother and daughter sitting down planning a wedding. He imagine that soon he'll have to mortgage the house just to make it. But they plan, they plan, the bride plans to uh, have that day her entrusted and, and closest friend, confidant, support, and lifetime partner, loving her to the point of giving himself for her. The planning starts with bridal books and magazines and registries and recruitment of, of bridesmaids, selections of colors, determination of sin, the rings, the cake, the bridal showers, and, and bridal dinners, the highs, the lows, frustrations, and successes. And I hope somebody's not breaking out in a sweat right now, just remembering that. And when the day is fully come, remember the day of the wedding, the joy, the pictures, the celebrations, and congratulatory remarks, the departures into the future and hope for decades of love and, and happiness. Sometimes it's a disappointment because you spend a year planning for the wedding, and within an hour, the celebration is over. But at least you plan. And I'm saying, if we've got sense enough to plan, we ought to expect that God can plan. If we plan for our happiness, we ought to expect that God plans for our, our happiness. Plans for our education, plans for our, our wedding plans. It's good sometimes to plan for your departure from here. Amen? The day you leave me in, you don't want your family scrambling, trying to pay for where to put you, how to bury you. You want things in order. You don't want them on the front row crying and can't quit. You want them on the front row smiling about the money that's going to be spent. Amen. He was a good dad. Wonderful husband. Chi ching, chi ching. Wonderful life insurance policy. He's a good man. We plan even for that. Jesus spoke of another planned day. Those days when he said, this day is strength fulfilled in your hearing, Luke 4 and 21. And I would say at this point, interject here, that not only do we plan, but life is better when we plan. And it's good to have some life planning to assist you, you know, to have wedding plans. But we need a life plan. Somebody who can tell us what it's going to be like every stage of the journey. The reason people have wedding planners is because sometimes people don't think of, of everything they need to think of. An experienced wedding planner has already mapped out what should occur. We all realize that uh, we can be a little, use a little help every now and then. Not only for weddings, but also for life. What people reject when it comes to their spiritual lives is that somebody needs to help them plan. Yeah. That's the reason the church is important. It's good sometimes to hear somebody's voice beside mine. Sometimes in life you'll reach, reach a moment in life where you can't even think straight. And it's good to have somebody by your side that can help you see through things clearly. We need to plan in life. We need to plan in life for our marriages because you go in happy and just within a few months you find yourself arguing. Say amen when you can. You ever had an argument in your marriage? Some people have arguments in, in, in their marriage. I'm talking about people who really love each other. You can have such an argument in your marriage. You can, you can imagine uh, your, your, your partner's uh, uh, funeral day. Amen. You have to have somebody help you in your marriage so you don't see your marriage partner lying in a coffin one of these days. You, you need somebody to help you plan even what to do with your children. Amen. Because you don't know everything. No one of us knows everything. And that's the reason it's important for us to hear the voice of God. 
If you don't hear the voice of God in your marriage, as soon as you run into a disagreement, you will be imagining being down at the courthouse getting your divorce. You need somebody to sit down with you and tell you, help you plan your marriage out so you can have more good days than bad days. Listen to another voice. Listen to the word of God. Otherwise, you will soon get out of your marriage. Amen. Uh, lady, I'm not just talking about the man this Amen. Men get counsel all the time. That's the reason they get kind of numb to the, these words. We need to talk. <laughs> Man already knows what that means. We need to talk. We need to talk. And he's thinking, oh, Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Not another talk. But you have to tell young men, in your marriage, your wife's going to say to you one day, we need to talk. But I want you to understand, it's not a real talk. Right? But it's not a dialogue, it's a monologue. What it we need to do is I need to take you to a room, sit you in a chair, and you're going to listen for the next three hours. You understand me? Because he'll go back there in the early days of his marriage, she said, we need to talk. And, and she'll be saying something, he said, but let me say something. I'm going to rest up, get in the rest of you just added another 30 minutes to the talk. <laughs> and, and people need to be informed of how this is going to be. You better see you can stay in your marriage 40 or 50 years. I'm not saying you're going to not have some days where you, where you feel like crying and will cry. There'll be some days when you, when you act like your job is to slam the door. <laughs> Amen. That, that your job is to take all the dishes out of the cabinet and break them. I see young marriage couples do that. I said, man, why do you pick up all your own dishes? <laughs> you know who got to pay for your dishes? Put that in You're punishing yourself. You need people to help you plan with your children. People who understand that how you rear your children will result in how they live their lives, not only in the world, but how they live their lives with God. And if you don't listen, you don't think it's important to bring your children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, then that's going to come back on you. Yeah. Yes. Parents, you got to pray with your children sometime. Yeah. Amen. Well, we don't have any children in here. Amen. But those of you who are listening anywhere, somewhere, pray with your children sometime. Call the children together and let them know there is a God. Show them how they're to act in the presence of God. Because they can't figure this thing out on their own. Somebody's got to show them. Amen. Then bring them to church. Bring them to Bible class and let them know this is a serious thing. This is not a play thing. And if you can make it through 12 years of elementary school, middle school, and high school, and four years of college, then you don't need to quit church as soon as you get 18. Amen, somebody. They need to know how to live their lives, how to live the church life, and then teach them not to grow up with hateration and wrong expectation. Let them know how people are for real, and let them know how you are for real. You have them thinking that everybody else in the church is bad, and you're the only one who's good, and your own children can look at you and know you are the hypocrite. So you got to learn to live right in front of your own children. Amen. When you can. Plan for how things are going to turn out in life. You live your life every day with that expectation. So that people know how to hold on to God Almighty. Do it in your work life. Do it in your marriage life. Do it in your parenting life. And then even show your children that as you grow older, you're going to have to care for some older parents. And you want to benevol be benevolent in that. That's when you're going to show your children what patience is. Because your, your older parent may not be able to function as he or she once did. Right? I've been in a home with older parents and, and, and their older children trying to take care of them. And, and sometimes it's a matter of life and death. I've been in call to houses. Brother, brother, can you come over here? My, my mom is standing in front of me and I'm laying in the bed and, and she got a knife in my throat. <laughs> and she told you when you were fired one day to go catch up with you now. <laughs> 
But you got to show your children that love abounds anyway. That even when your parents get older, you have a responsibility. Life is about responsibility. Stop running from responsibility. Stop running from accountability. Stop running from being real. Just learn what God is and learn to live to the glory of God. Stop acting like God's the enemy and let Jesus be your friend. God would have seen in the church there not a friend like the lonely Jesus. Show people where God is. But then, when the day was fully come, there's another day besides this day that Jesus was in the synagogue. And that's this day of Pentecost. Pentecost is evidence that God knew the problems we we create for ourselves through our refusal to walk by his guidance. He knew the problems we encounter with trying to make the dark light and the bad good. He knows the problems we suffer when our hearts and minds refuse to accept that he knows best than God does. God created us. And our problems often resulted in pain, not only suffering from family, from friends, from work associates, uh, associates are, are just having life. But sometimes our pain is a result of ourselves. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. We are in a blame society. We think that everything that happens to us is somebody else's fault. My daddy did X, and my mama did Y. My aunts and uncles did Z. Everybody done something to me. We think our problems are always outside of ourselves. Here's something real for you. Sometimes we create a problem for ourselves. Right? Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Because we never learn to listen to God or the people God puts in our lives to help us. And I'll say again, all of us can use a little help every now and then. Say it this morning, somebody said that. Uh, you can't see yourself, hear yourself, or smell yourself, so you ought to listen to what somebody tells you about yourself. Stop arguing all the time. Stop butting in all the time. Stop saying, but let me say something. Tell yourself one time in your life when somebody's telling you about yourself, you're just going to sit down and listen, and at the end say amen, and then go, or go away and think about what that person said. And I'll tell you something else. You learn to listen to people, you might start to hear a pattern of what people are saying about you. Amen. I know I have people tell me. I listen to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. By the time the ninth person comes by and says something, I'll be thinking, but you know, this stuff's starting to sound like it may be true. Maybe I am hard headed. Maybe I do talk too much. Maybe I do run to see everybody else's problem and don't see my own. Maybe I do like to have the last word and have my say. Maybe it is me, not them, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Help me to stop correcting everybody else and help me to correct myself because I can be my own worst enemy. God puts people in our lives sometimes to show us us. Yeah, don't get so busy helping everybody else that you don't help yourself. Yeah, man, somebody, y'all looking at me funny right now. And I want to assure you that ain't nobody called me about you this morning. I, I told you people keep telling you, people keep telling you, people keep telling you you act paranoid and you need to listen. Every time the preacher gets to talking, you think somebody told you a bit that no, that's just you. But God knows this about us, and I'm thankful that God knows us better than we know ourselves. And if you think about it, you'd be a much better church member if you admit some stuff about yourself that you will allow another folk. Because there are folk right now who are not in church assemblies thinking about what they know about other folk rather than thinking about themselves. Let me tell you something. There's no such thing as a church member not coming to the assembly because of somebody else. Did y'all hear me? That never occurs. Whenever I am not in the assembly 
is because of what I'm doing to myself and not somebody else. Because you already knew the other folk were not perfect. Didn't you? You already knew people lie on people. People don't always live up to expectations. You already know that. And you not only know it, you've got some experience with it. Because the same thing you see in others, you too are a sinner. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, I say that to say this. Those of us church members who talk to people, who say to us, well, I'm not at church because of him or her. You need to stop listening to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And help people see that if their eyes were focused on Jesus, they would know that part of their task is to be around people who are imperfect. See, the fruit of the Spirit is not everything's easy. It's love and joy and peace and long-suffering. It includes patience. It includes the ability to be around folk who are not always right and like they got to deal with you. You got to deal with them and you do it with love and joy. You don't run around the city. You don't run around the brotherhood. You don't run around the state talking about what everybody else is doing. You focus on yourself and ask God to help you to be a help to somebody else. I'm saying, church people, you got to stop listening to that and refusing to correct that. Let a person know. You know why you know. You know why you're not faithful. It's not because of brother Carruthers or sister Carruthers, <laughs> brother, sister, brother, brother, sister, brother, sister, Fox, work, brother. That's not why you're not faithful. You're not unfaithful because of brother Coughlin. Not unfaithful because of the youth. You don't miss church because of Brother Scott. Right, Brother Scott? <laughs> you miss because of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, if you were right, yes, you'd understand. I, I see what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> if you were right, you'd understand that the man who died for you was talked about. His name was scandalized. His friends forsook him. Religious leaders lied on him. But he walked down the Via Della Rosa anyway. He stood before the priest anyhow. He marched up Calvary anyhow. He allowed himself to be put on the cross anyhow. And he told us if you follow me, See, if you stop playing with God and playing church, you'll find yourself in the presence of God and in the presence of church folk. So stop lying on everybody else and get Christian enough to give God some faithfulness. Because in the end, the eternal purpose and plan of God will be accomplished. Let me end with this. The day of Pentecost was fully come. It was a day when all of the teaching and educational enterprises that ever took place among the faithful reached a culmination. So that is not just the graduation of our children that we think about and the education of the same. We need to think about what Jesus taught us and how Pentecost came about. This day that fully came is not just a reflection on the fact that Jesus died, but it's also like we planned our weddings. God had planned a wedding, hadn't he? And it was a wedding between Jesus and the church. The book of Revelation said that the marriage of, of the Lord and his bride had come. And when we talk about planning for death, Understand that God planned for Jesus to die ignominiously, but to raise, be raised in glory. The Bible said all we like sheep had gone astray. Now right now, you need to think about yourself as an individual. Don't think about everybody else who went astray. 
Understand that each one of us has gone astray. Amen. All we like sheep have gone astray. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Right now what you need to understand is that just as Christ died for other sinners, he died for you as an individual. But the good news about that is that just as God demonstrated his love for others, God demonstrated his love for you even on the day. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, God made a separation. A separation between those who had not lived in his presence and those who could live in his presence. God made a distinction between those who were living without the blood and those who would be covered by the blood. God made a distinction between those who were not sealed and those who would be sealed. Those who were not gifted and those who would be gifted. Those who were lost and those who would be saved when the day of Pentecost was fully come. The Bible says that Peter ended his sermon in this climax. Let all the house of Israel know. Doesn't matter what tribe you're from. Doesn't matter what century you're from. Doesn't matter who your king was or your high priest was. Let all the house of Israel know assuredly. No doubt about it. Nothing to question about it. Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus. Which one? The one you crucified. The one you put on the cross. The one you wouldn't listen to. The one you did not expect. The one you wanted to get rid of. God had made that same both Lord and Christ. Please, Lord, I'm telling you this morning, regardless of what's going on in the world, Jesus is Lord. And he's also Christ. He's anointed. And I tell you, so I tell you, church, that's what we must share with the world. Jesus is Savior. And everybody's better because of him. Including ourselves. So when the day was fully come, God said, this is it. There will be no other dispensation. There will be no other revelation. Everything you need is right here. And it's found in Jesus Christ. But I want you to understand that day was not a day that terminated at the end of 24 hours. When the day of salvation came, it was a day that remains to this day. Today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. It's the day God planned for you. If you're not a child of God this morning, God planned this moment for you. He wants you to understand that he's a message to preach. And it's because the world we live in is not a world that's dependent upon Jesus and is not a religious world. So that whenever you start talking about Jesus, you're going to find yourself saying something that is contrary to how the world is living. I told you before, I've seen people visit this church and they come and I talk with them and they come as long you don't need to be living together that you need to marry, then they don't come anymore. And they go find a church where the preaching is smoother. And the preacher is intelligent enough not to challenge people to do as God has commanded them to do. If you visit here and you like to come to church once or twice a month and the preacher is saying that faithfulness is every week, then you don't stay here. You go find a place where you visit every once in a while, be entertained, and go on and do like you want to do. If you come here and you're used to people <coughs> being told it doesn't matter what's going on, God still loves you and God does. We just don't come to church and hear that Jesus wants us to live right. We leave this assembly and we live right. We don't come here singing the sweet melodies of heaven and go home and kiss it. Uh, cussing everybody out. He's real. Oh, I just said something. Those who come to church, they don't need church to start cussing each other out. Do they? Answer me, brother. He's real. Dear to his glory, God, the fruit of the Spirit, and encourage us. If you hear this morning, and you need your Lord and Savior in any way.
Here now is your opportunity is together we stand and sing in invitation song from Jesus. There's a fountain free, tears for you. Tears for you and me. Let us hate. Let us hate. To the break. Haste to the break. Haste to the break. Tears of God. Tears of God. Finally, she was able to calm down and 
She'd give me the keys to the car and say, take, drive my car home, and I don't even know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what happens when you can't think for yourself. My point is, yeah. life can put you in a spot. Yes, sir. Yeah. Trouble can put you in a spot mm -hmm. where your own thoughts won't help you. Jesus. And sometimes it's good to listen to folk who are trying to help you yeah, yeah, yeah. get to where you're going. And I'm saying this more. There are a whole lot of church members who, who listen on Facebook right now, who are in this audience right now. Folk have been trying to help you. And you don't realize you're in a, you're in a crisis. You're in a moment where you can't all the time think for yourself. Learn to trust somebody who cares for you. A lot of us would have done, would have done better a long time ago if we had listened to mom. Listen to dad. Listen to a sinner. Listen to a brother and sister in Christ, even if we had listened to a preacher. Don't let yourself be the final voice of what you hear in life, because other folk actually can help you, regardless of what people say. Now, what crisis are you in? What counsel has your friend given you? The question is, will you heed it, or are you going to stay in your crisis? Will you let a voice speak to you and help you? Or are you just going to go on cussing, out of control, and can't figure things out? The gentleman went to the hospital. He had to go to go to Baptist, and his wife was big. And he worked and said, if you don't take it to Baptist, don't take it to Baptist. He said, we have to take it to Baptist. That's the trauma center. But a lot of old people in this community, they don't like to go to Baptist because they feel like if they go to Baptist, they may not come back out. <laughs> but they finally convinced her to let him go to go to baptism. Last I spoke with her, she could not get any update because of the COVID protocols. And they would, but we're praying for that family and we're praying for God's family. Because we've had a wreck in life. And we need to trust Jesus to help us. If you need it, come right now as we continue to sing this invitation song. Come to Jesus. There's a rock that cliff and no soul is
teachers are. That's the most important thing, right? Just have all the teachers and all the faculty that have to go back to school starting tomorrow and keep them safe and hoping that um, you know, we just don't have to shut that down again and hoping that everything will go well. Also this morning we had additional uh, members who requested prayer. Just wanted to acknowledge their names at this time. And, uh, we had in our uh, 9 o'clock class, we had uh, Brother Nichols, Sister Caperton, Sister Garner. We also had uh, Brother Ford and Brother Jones and Brother Krim uh, making acknowledgments this morning or requests this morning. Also at 8 o'clock uh, service, uh, Sister Gordon, <coughs> Sister Richardson, and Sister Caperton again. We had those individuals. So keep those individuals in prayer, all of us who are going through different things. Remember all of those in prayer. Let us go to God in prayer for the request that have been made. Our Father who art in heaven, Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy holy and righteous name. We just come to you today, Heavenly Father, first with thanksgiving in our hearts. You've allowed us just to see this day to be here. And Heavenly Father, to come and, and worship you, Heavenly Father. So we are so thankful for that blessing you've given us. And Heavenly Father, we just ask your blessings upon Sister Carla, who has come with thanks to Heavenly Father for the prayers that have been answered. And Heavenly Father, continue to bless Sister Carla and, and the Carla family. Just continue to give them those things that they stand in need of. They might continue to do those things that will be pleasing unto you. We ask your blessings upon Sister Copeland's brother, the Heavenly Father, and actually just continue to work with him and continue to reach out and help him even in his rehabilitation and those things that he's going through. Heavenly Father, give him those things that he needs and that Sister Copeland might be able to continue to help him in all those areas that he also has needs in. And Heavenly Father, even as school starting back and, and teachers are going back, Heavenly Father, we just ask a special blessing upon students, upon staff, upon teachers of all schools, Heavenly Father, uh, what may be, be confronted. And we might all use good judgment, Heavenly Father, as we go back and precautions. And dear Heavenly Father, most of all, that we trust in you to take care of us. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Sister Copeland and for Brother Ford who will be moving. Dear Heavenly Father, we actually continue blessings in his life. Dear Heavenly Father, he might continue to hold on to your unchanged hand as he goes forward mm -hmm. and becomes a, a part of another congregation in the D.C. area. Again, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for him and his presence, even his growth and development here. And he might be a blessing to wherever he, to wherever he goes. Amen. So thank you, dear Heavenly Father. For our brother. And actually, you're blessed for Brother Scott's wife, who's also uh, starting uh, teaching uh, this week coming. Dear Heavenly Father, again, for the teachers, students, and staff, we just ask again, Dear Heavenly Father, continue to be with them and guide and direct, and all things might go well. Dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the time you've given us. Thank you for the message we've heard today, Dear Heavenly Father, and actually, your continued blessings upon the church, the Church of Christ, and we might continue to do those things that would be. Pleasing in your sight, Heavenly Father, we might be unified in our message. And Heavenly Father, we might just be blessed. Thank you for your precious Son, Christ Jesus, and the sacrifice he's made for each one of us. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. On the first day of the week, we are instructed to give. And of course, it's a good thing that God instructs us to give because that helps us to be more like God. God's character is to give, and certainly we need to be molding ourselves into his character. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, beginning verse 6, the Bible says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he who sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. At this time, we will give you the opportunity to give. <clears throat> No tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory. Yeah. <laughs> 
And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for remission of sin. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come again. Thank you for the cup that represents your son shed blood. Again, Heavenly Father, we pray that we will take it with acknowledgement of the sacrifice that was made for us and in obedience to thy word. Thank you for all blessings. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to ask our members at this time to uh, please fill out your attendance forms and pass those to the two center aisles and the ushers will collect those at this time. Thank you. I heard no story how sin came from glory, how the gates light on Calvary is to save a rich like me. Praise the 
mighty God. Yes. yes. Glory, glory. Praise God. Let us pray. Oh, heavenly righteous God, we thank you for this worship service, this experience we had today. Oh, the sermon, it was awesome. Thank you, Lord, for our pastor and minister, Brother Jefferson. Yeah. He brought your word today, Lord. We thank you for being in our midst today. Yeah. Lord, we love you because you have first loved us. Lord, thank you for your love. We ask you to bless, continue to bless each and every one that is represented here today. As we leave this place, let us take this word with us in our hearts and our minds and continue to be light shining in a dark world that others may see your goodness and give you the glory. And Lord, we thank you. And may the love, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue to be with us as we leave. Now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Once again, we truly appreciate each and every one of you being with us this day. And as everyone has stayed prior to me coming, that this has been a good day. Amen. The brother has spoken the word from God. We heard the word from God this day. At this time, I'm before you welcoming our guest this morning. I have two cards, and we truly appreciate you being with us. And, and, and um, we're going to ask you to stand at this time. And we have a, a Linda and Kaylee Wing, Wingfall. 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 Amen. My <laughs> two cars. Uh, if there are any other visitors in our audience, we'll give you an opportunity to stand and let us know you we can properly um, address you at this time. And but by the way, as you uh, as far as West Salem State, we have several other young people here who are at West Salem State. Brother Kim, will you stand in the back so she can see who you are? Uh, is, uh, you can check with our West Salem State. Uh, that's it. But we also have a professor that come here as well uh, from West Salem State. So you have plenty around you church members. All right. I saw someone else stand. Yeah, yeah. Me and my grandson, Robert Wilson from Malawi. My grandson lives in Sussex Street, Church of Christ. Amen. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone on my left? Anyone on my right? Anyone else in the middle? We truly appreciate you being with us today. Are there any other announcements? I guess I want to emphasize that on, uh, I think it's the second Sunday in September, we're having a new member recognition, those who've been baptized, those who have placed membership. Uh, we have some baptismal certificates we're gonna be giving out on the 12th. And then immediately after that, we'll have a, a small luncheon um, for those families and their partners. And I think Brother Wilson said he'll begin working on that. Um, and so that'll just be for the new members, uh, their families, and their partners on that Sunday. But all will be recognized during the worship service on the second Sunday in September. We encourage um, the partners to make sure you encourage your members uh, your partners to be here at the uh, 10 o'clock service on September the uh, 12th. I think that's the date. That's the 14th. I don't know on that, but let's let's put that on our calendars. Right. Consider yourselves just going 